Hey everybody, so today we're going to spend some time on learning how to add games to your Batacera build. Got a lot of feedback from the previous video, people asking about how to do it. We're going to work on two different methods. One is software, the second is actually using a second SD card. Uh, you can actually use a second slot and do it that way. So, first of all, um, those of you that are familiar with the, uh, with the image, you, you know that right here you're not going to see both partitions. You're only going to see this uh, no name or... I think it's what it's called, no name. But uh, the, the share partition isn't visible. Uh, so that's, that's the issue because that's where all the content is. All your games are going to go into that share partition. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to spend some time on learning how to add games through software. So the first method is Paragon. So Paragon is a, soft, is a software suite that uh, is available for Mac and Windows. It is something that you have to pay for. It comes with a 10-day trial. Uh, but it's really great software. Um, so I use it for the Mac and it makes things a lot easier because it's just there in, um, in my viewer, my, what's it called? The finder. Yeah. In finder, you're just able to just drop things into there. Like right here, I'm just kind of demonstrate where I can just add a game to the share uh, drive and I can delete a game. Super simple. It's just like if it's just another drive, right? Which is the way it should be. No big deal. No, no must, no fuss. Uh, so that's really easy, um, but it does, it costs, right? So, you know, I think it's like 40 bucks to buy the license. Um, so that's the easiest way to do it. You know, it, of course, you have to pay a little bit for it. Um, I do a lot of testing and a lot of things on other systems, so I found it to be useful for uh, my needs. Um, and then in the future, you may not need this, right? So this is just an alpha test, an alpha build uh, so this is, but this is an option. Uh, the next part has to do with actually um, using the second SD card. So that's the next piece that we're going to spend some time on. So on the GitHub, and that's why I was on this video is because, uh, you know, on the description there, you just click on that description that sends you to the GitHub for the Alpha 3 uh, build, the test build. So when you go there, if you scroll into it and you actually read uh, some of the content that's there, there's a little part in the bottom that actually uh, shows you, kind of some gives you some instructions on what to do uh, on adding a second drive. It even tells you here, you can also use a secondary SD card for the ROMs and BIOS. Uh, the method to use the secondary SD card is different in this build. Once you boot it into emulation station, go to settings, System settings, uh, storage device, blah, 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 blah. It gives you, gives you all that information. So I basically just used this to test it to see if it actually worked. It also mentions to download this uh, file, the, this uh, RetroArch CFG file, configuration file. I, I'm removing it so that I can download it, so I can show you that I'm downloading it. But you want to download that file too because it mentions that sometimes controls are broken. So you might want to replace that file. So I'm going to spend some time on showing you how to do that as well. But we're going to just get right into it um, and get the SD card ready. So here I'm just going to, what I'm doing is just reformatting a blank SD card. It wasn't blank. I, I called it SD test, SD2 test, whatever. But I'm just going to go ahead and go through the format process. I do format at FAT32. I don't think it recommends FAT32, but it worked. So I'm just going to tell you that I use FAT32 when I'm doing this, and it seemed to work pretty well. So that's all I'm doing is erasing it. I'm going to give it a new name. And pay attention to the name because that's going to show up in the future. So SD2 demo, I think that's what I called it, right? So just pay attention to that. That's what I'm going to call the card. It's going to be in FAT32, and on a Mac, it's the uh, master master boot partition or whatever I don't know um, so that's pretty much it I burned I burned the disk and now I'm gonna eject it it's right there that SD2 demo so I'm just gonna go ahead and take it out and I'll add it to the um, the uh, system so like I'm already booted up on Batacera, so all I'm going to do is just add the card into the system. And now you're just going to go hit start, go down to uh, system settings. And then you're going to scroll till you find storage device. 
Now, once you insert the card, it's going to have it there. So you see it right there. It's SD2 demo. That's the card. That's the card that I just burned and I put into the system. So it recognizes that. So I'm going to change it to that uh, storage device. So that's where I want to get all my stuff from. You're going to go ahead and exit and, and hit uh, select and just go ahead and restart the system. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Just are you sure? Yeah, you want to restart? Yes. And this process takes a while. I'd say about a minute and a half. So that's why I sped it up. And once it does that, it'll go back into Batacera. And obviously you haven't added any content. So what it did during that time, it just added all your ROM folders. And it basically set up a, a new, uh, the drive to be Batacera, right? To launch everything from that drive. So I'm going to take the, the SD card out. And we're going to put it back into the uh, computer so that you can kind of see what's changed. So remember, it was a blank SD card. Uh, and it shouldn't be blank anymore. Now you could actually add some stuff in there. And you do want to wait for that part. Don't just build your own folders. Just let the system do it for you. And now you have SD2, and now you have this Batacera folder. You click in there, and now you have a bunch of different things. You have BIOS and other folders, and there's a ROMs folder. So And look, it's populated, you know, some several systems that are there. So that's that's good. So now you can act, start adding content to that. And that's what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to go ahead and open up um, a new window. <clears throat> and I'm going to drop in one ROM into this card. And we're going to launch it just so that you can kind of see what's going on. So I think I'm going to pick uh, Neo Geo Last Resort. Got to scroll in to find it and just drag it in. So now it's like you're just moving files like you normally would. Because that, that SD card was formatted in FAT32, so now you can view it in your computer, no problem. Um, it's not Linux, so it, it just it's just easier, right? And that's what this purpose of this is. So I just dragged it in. Um, I just, I don't know why I'm scrolling through all that. Oh, I think I was looking for a Neo Geo zip. I don't really need that BIOS file. So that's it. I moved it in there. I ejected the disk. So now I'm going to put that card, um, of course, take the card out of the USB, pop it into slot two, slot two, slot two. There you go. So yeah, don't forget it's in slot two. Um, drop it into slot two and we're going to power it back on. And at some point we're going to speed it up because the process, the boot process. So this is the one thing I'm going to mention is that the boot process for launching off of the SD card two takes about a minute and a half. It's a long time. And hopefully that's something that's going to get worked on or fixed. Um, and it's regardless whether you have it full of ROMs or just one, one game. It still just takes a while. But here we go. We're going to go into the Neo Geo folder and uh, there's a, so that my Mac makes a bunch of dirty files that, that dot underscore stuff. So I just deleted that. And now I'm a little confused because I don't actually see the, the game title. I figured I'd get out, come back in, and I still don't see it. I'm like, ah, the hell with it. I'm going to go ahead and push. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and push A and see what happens, or B, whatever. That's okay, so it launched it. Great. So the purpose of this is so that you can kind of see what happens if you just do it um, without messing with that config file. So look at, if you see the screen, it's a lot bigger. It's like blown up, and controls don't work. So I'm pushing select, start, buttons, nothing's happening. So if you go back to that GitHub, it mentions that. <clears throat> so just tap the power button, it will shut off the system. Eject the SD card. And that was just to demonstrate um, what happened. So I would just recommend that you just change out this CFG file right off the bat. Uh, but I wanted to demonstrate kind of what you might encounter if you don't follow those instructions. So from this point on is kind of what you would continue to do uh, as soon as you uh, build that, that uh, SD card from your, uh, from your device. So again, going back to this GitHub, it does mention here at the bottom about, about the controls. Uh, the, the controls might not function the way they should. Uh, so use the CFG file that's located below and replace that so that uh, things can run the way they should. So that's what I'm going to do. And there's the CFG file. Remember, I downloaded it earlier. So if you have a Windows uh, device, easy. All you got to do is go to that dot um, config folder. But there's no dot config folder here on my Mac. So for those of you with a Mac, uh, you're going to have to take an extra step. So I'm going to show you what to do. 
so I use this uh, software called Visual uh, Visual Studio Code or Visual Code. Uh, it's it's like a it's a coding software. It's free. So I'm just taking you there to the site, and just notice there Visual Studio Code. There is a section there for Mac, Windows. You can download whatever you know whatever uh, OS you have or whatever. And um, I do need that software so that I can see those kind of hidden folders that I normally can't see on uh, the Mac. So again, if you have a Windows device, you don't really have to go through all this stuff, so you can actually move on to the next phase of the video. But I do, so if you have a Mac, you have to open up Visual Studio Code, open it up, and then you're just gonna navigate to your SD card. So open, select the SD card, go to Batacera, and then just go ahead and open that. And once you do there, then I'm going to navigate into Batacera or uh, settings. I'm sorry, settings. And then there's that dot config folder right there. So that's the folder that you need to put that new conf uh, config, RetroArch config, uh, CFG, whatever it is. So I'm just going to open up a finder window uh, or desktop or whatever. What's it called? The uh, file viewer, file browser, whatever. And I'm going to go to my downloads where I had it. And I'm just going to drag it into that folder where it lives so that's all I did right there I dragged it in cool let me clear out this window that's in front <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out where that prompt is there it is it says hey you're uh, putting in a file that's identical to another file Are you sure you want to override it whatever blah blah yes I'm gonna override it um, and once it's done it's done you don't have to save it because you didn't really make any edits all you did was just change a file and now it's in there so I'm gonna go ahead and eject that <clears throat> and put it back into the device. So again, that whole step about adding the config file, you don't have to go through all these steps. Just do it right off the bat. As soon as you burn that or um, you uh, populate the SD card and you put it back into your computer, uh, while you're in there, just go ahead and change out that config file. Because uh, I've already done this twice and both times I experienced the same thing. So I would just recommend that anybody that is gonna do this, just go ahead and do it right off the bat. Uh, if you, again, if you have Windows, and no problem. Um, if you have a Mac, then you'll have to do that. I mean, that, that's my way of using Visual Studio to, to kind of see those hidden files. And it's free and it's easy, so uh, it's just an extra step. So here we are going back into the, um, the device, and we're going to test out that same game just to see how it plays. And we're going to launch it. And if you remember, it was blown up and, and controls didn't work. So this should fill the screen correctly and buttons should respond or it should respond to the button presses, right? So there's the good, good news there. It's not all filled up. I'm adding coins. That's great. Pushing start, getting in, and I'm able to play the game. So perfect. It works. So that config file was important. is a critical piece to uh, getting things to work. So I'm just get a little carried away and I want to play some games there. So, all right. Uh, one of the things too, I want to show you, you can exit by hitting start and select and then um, close content. And then here I get a little too happy and pick the wrong thing. And I'm all thumbs up, but it wasn't it yet. So just, you can go ahead and uh, exit uh, RetroArch. And it'll take you back to your uh, Batacera or emulation station uh, menu. And there we are, we're back in. So yeah, that was just a demonstration of what's possible. I, I basically loaded up a bunch of Neo Geo games with uh, box art and all that good stuff. But uh, hopefully you got something out of this, and this will help you actually get some games going. 
in your uh, Batacera build. And again, this is reference to the new or the latest Alpha 3 uh, test build uh, for Batacera. But um, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask. But I think this is kind of what a lot of people were asking for. And uh, like I said, I hope this helps. So whether you have Windows or a Mac, I think I, you know, pretty much pointed out all the different solutions and all the different things that you could do um, to get games going on the system. Um, it's been working really well, and I've been testing a lot of stuff, and it's, it's a really solid system, but there's still a lot of updates coming. So anyways, thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, until next time.